This is the River Itchen in Hampshire. And as a child, I played in these streams. And it was here that I cut my teeth when it came to an interest in natural history. And today I'm really excited because I've returned with a group of practical, proactive conservationists who are working with a freshwater superstar. The health of our rivers relies on species such as the white-clawed crayfish. But since the 1970s, the population in the UK has experienced a 70% decline. Jen Nightingale is a researcher for the Bristol Zoological Society and part of a huge partnership working to bring back the species from the brink. I've always liked crustaceans like this. I suppose it's because of their somewhat mechanical, robotic construction. But um, what is it about the crayfish that clearly ticks your box? They're long-lived invertebrates, so these guys can live anywhere up to about sort of 10, 12 years. They're a slow breeder. They've got a really interesting social relationship. So they have these social ranking, a bit like a dog pack. When they're youngsters, they kind of need to be together and they'll huddle together. As they get older, they get more sort of cross with each other. So for me, I just find that absolutely fascinating. And also the fact that, you know, these guys in their own right are ecosystem engineers. And if you get them right, you can balance the whole ecosystem system again. To me that's really powerful. I think it's an awesome flagship for a kind of river restoration project. And you've bred these in captivity? That's right. So we breed them at Bristol Zoo Gardens. 15 years now we've been breeding crayfish. It's a huge effort to save the species, which has had more than its fair share of existential threats over the decades. There's a few baddies in this story. So we've got obviously habitat destruction, pollution, degradation, the usual suspects, but then in about 1975, uh, the first signal crayfish was brought in. So that's an American species, it's bigger, it's bolder. It not only outcompetes it, but also it carries something called crayfish plague. It can decimate a white little crayfish population in about mm, maybe a couple of weeks. And here, uh, what are we doing? Are we supplementing a population that's already here or replacing one which has sadly vanished? These kind of headland waters of the River Itchen is still a stronghold for this species, but they are still in low numbers. So what we're doing here is we're upstream of where they naturally are found, and so we're basically doing a supplementation to try and build resilience into one of the only remaining populations in Hampshire. This is a really good time to release them because they're about to breed. The 72 crayfish in this box are used to a cosy lab life. So we can't just sling them in willy-nilly. They need to acclimatise to the waters of this chalk stream. This is their first taste of freedom. It is. Oh, they're so ready. It's ace. Imagine what they're sensing in there now, Jen. They're sensing all sorts mm -hmm. of things that you've poured in from that water. Other crayfish, potentially. Yep, totally. The hormones of yep. those. Yep. Right, you go first. This is your moment. OK. I've never released a crayfish before. There you go, you got all... I'm starting big. You are. Oh. <laughs> God, you little beauty. Go on. Oh, get in there. Do some breeding and repopulating. Oh, it made me feel really good. Hey, you got a warm glow. The cool thing about crayfish is they're really good indicators of good water quality. I call them the corals of the freshwaters because they hate things like phosphates, nitrates, chemical pollution. Do you know what I like most about it? What's that? I like the fact that this is something that's the result of a lot of, firstly, hard study to understand how to produce these animals in captivity and then hard work actually doing it. And this is that payoff. This is good, proactive conservation at work, isn't it? It's great. I mean, basically, if you get it right for crayfish, you can restore a whole river with them. So I should go home tonight knowing that my beloved Itchen, at least in this part, is healthier because of your extraordinary endeavours, basically. And that makes me feel good. Good. Because I love this place. I had such a good day, I can't tell you. I really enjoyed myself. Massive thanks to Jen Nightingale from the Bristol Zoological Society and Dr Ben Rushbrook from Hampshire Wildlife Trust. So good, so good. Now, there are some problems, as you saw there, when it comes to reintroducing these animals. There's no point in going through all of the hard work 
growing those little white clawed crayfish and then putting them back in the wrong place. And you don't want to put them where there's any signal crayfish with that crayfish plague. So how do you solve the problem? Well, you've got to go out and look in the water and see what you can find. Make sure there are no signal crayfish there. Hmm. Not easy, big problem. These things hide themselves. Scientists like Ben and Jen and their colleagues go out, they spend days walking up those streams and they miss the crayfish or they don't find them. They need another technique and modern technology has come to their assistance. Something called eDNA and metagenomics. And I can explain that using these carrots and these peas. So let's imagine that these carrots here are signal crayfish. You take your signal crayfish in isolation in a lab, you extract the DNA which defines that as a species, as a signal crayfish. Then you do the same thing over here with some white clawed crayfish. You identify their DNA which is distinct from the signals here. Now that's OK when you're in a lab and you've got them separately. But of course, in real life, they don't live separately. They live in an ecological community. Effectively, they live in a great big soup of species, which are all mixed together in, as one. And when you think about it, that soup is what you find when you go out to the river. Somewhere in there could be a signal crayfish. Somewhere in there could be a white-clawed crayfish. The Norfolk Rivers Trust has been extracting water from their rivers and it's this water that contains the secret because they send it off to a particular piece of equipment where they can identify the environmental DNA, the DNA of all of the things that have been tested in the lab in that sample and that means that they can identify whether there are just from the water, signal or white clawed crayfish there. And they've been doing this on the rivers in Norfolk and these are the sorts of results they've come up with. They found rivers where there are only signal crayfish. They found other rivers where there were white clawed crayfish and they found some just using the water and extracting that DNA where there were white clawed signal and they've even been able to detect the crayfish plague in the water. So when it comes to the conservation, clearly, you're not going to put your white claws back in here with the signals. You're certainly not going to put them in here, whether you've got signals and the plague. You can put them into this stream here. I love that. I love the fact that science, which we typically see applied to, I don't know, solving crimes, is now solving conservation conundra. That's fantastic.